Just because you're limited to equipment doesn't mean you can't make the movement more difficult. So definitely consider trying. Actually, surprisingly, a video wasn't going to film today. I had next Monday's video planned and prepped for today, but because of this video, I'm now moving today's video to next month. You know what I mean. So obviously, I've got lean beef patties, dumbbell only leg workouts here. I know you're thinking, like Harry, I swear you've done a couple of videos on lean beef patty previously. You're right, I have. Firstly, it's a new video, it's a relevant video, and it's a very appropriate video for the topic I actually wanted to discuss anyway. And secondly, the topic I want to discuss actually, like I said, very much surrounds this video and says that I was going to talk about how effective dumbbell only workouts could be and how effective almost to an extent home workouts could be with dumbbells only following on from a previous comment question of the week question surrounding progressive overload and then this popped up and wow here we are now we're laughing obviously now you know what the video is going to be about we must do what needs to be done if at any point throughout this entire video you decide you like the video or maybe even just tolerate my content and just me in general then please let me know you like the video by liking the video and maybe by also clicking the red button down below subscribe to the channel and potentially tickling that bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week and if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video please do consider drop it down below in the comment section for the comment question of the week and i shall do so very quick announcement the tfnl growth guide pdf is dropping on december 19th and tfnl group coaching is dropping on i believe january 2nd so get ready for more information surrounding those bits and bobs coming soon it's going to be spicy the headwear continues and today this doesn't look very Christmassy to me but it came in the Christmas pack I bought. I'm not sold but I guess it is technically ant antlers but it kind of reminds me of like Minnie Mouse a bit. This is a video. It's very much a, a good catalyst for conversation surrounding the effectiveness of dumbbell only workouts and almost so where some limitations may lie. Also why certain things are actually pretty good with dumbbells. We're going to skip the mobility side of things because I speak about mobility here and there and I feel like I probably don't need to speak about it again for this video. I do think mobility is important. Warming up before a workout is important so I do encourage you to do all of those things. I'm gonna start out with Bulgarians because you know they're kind of like a lot of action. The first thing there is typically again this is mainly based on preference when you're looking at the realm of building muscle and hypertrophy typically we want to favor more stable movements earlier on in the in the session so essentially we want to put as much energy and emphasis into the movements that are not going to be limited by external variables. If you're doing a split squat for example stability could be a limiting factor that could prevent you from taking the quads or the glutes to failure perhaps whereas if you do a hack squat stability is not a limiting factor. So what I personally do for me is I favor the primary movements the more stable movements first and then I tackle the less stable movements like the split squats later on in the session not in all cases but for me personally and for my goals because essentially at that point my quads and whatever other muscles I'm looking at targeting are already very fatigued therefore they have to go through less to achieve failure therefore stability may become less of a limiting factor because they're already closer to failure as it is so many factors to consider and also when looking at like power output we're going to output more force when you are more stable therefore you want to kind of prioritize those movements earlier on for, again for me personally and I typically suggest that lots of people do the same although it's not necessary it also very much depends on goals like for example if your goals actually are relevant to stability and balance and things along those lines then you may actually factor these in earlier on. Warm up sets are basically where you go through the movement and you do the exercise but with a weight that's like lighter than challenging. Yeah, yeah, warm-up sets are very important. I'm a big believer in doing warm-up sets before nearly all of your movements. Movements that are either earlier on in the workout, require the most load, or involve more moving parts. I would typically do more warm-up sets in, so let's say two, three, four, five, depending on what I'm doing. Whereas movements that require less load, maybe have less moving parts, and towards the end of the workout when you're already pretty warm, I may actually only do one, one or two warm-up sets, depending on the movement, obviously. A hack squat, I may even do up to, let's say, five warm up sets to make sure I'm feeling juicy and good to go but a leg extension I may only do one warm-up set if it's the end of the workout because I'm already pretty toasted on my quads you can do all these exercises okay but if you're not challenging yourself you're not gonna see the same results as if you were using like a challenging weight that is fact intensity is one of the most important things to consider when you're looking at actually building muscle it doesn't matter if you want to be a bodybuilder or just somebody who simply wants to gain a little bit of muscle for their own personal desires you've got to train within close proximity or failure if not to failure to achieve that result and i actually cover this in the pyramid of importance which is a section in the tfnl growth guide december 19th dropping going live where i speak about what factors you must consider before maybe potentially worrying about optimizing movement selection. With a split squat, if you want to make it a bit more quad dominant, you would elevate the heels and encourage a bit more knee flexion, so a bit more knee travel. If you want to make it a bit more glute dominant, you probably keep the heels flat and maybe lean a bit more forward. 
tips and tricks you want to spice up your split squats depending on what your goals are. In this case, obviously, I know I'm speaking about the effectiveness of dumbbell workouts. Personally, when it comes to dumbbell versus barbell split squats, I will 99.9% .9 of the time favor a dumbbell split squat. I find barbells extremely unstable because you don't have the balance of your hands either side. I find them a bit risky because I'm worried I'm going to tip and fall and come crashing down. And I just find dumbbells much easier to consistently progressively overload with. So in that case, I would actually prefer dumbbells for that movement versus a barbell. Some people are like, oh my God, no, don't put your knees over your toes. Your knees are gonna explode. Well, like I kind of mentioned earlier, is when you are really trying to target the quads as much as possible, typically you would want to in elevate your heels potentially because that could maybe overcome or mask to some extent some potential ankle mobility hindrances you may have. In addition to, even if your, your mobility is good, it may allow you to get deeper with the squat, may allow your knees to travel further. One of the big things we consider when looking at the involvement of the quads and optimizing quad hypertrophy, especially in that lengthened position, which is obviously when the majority of tension is in the bottom position, like most squat variations, is knee travel and knee flexion. Allowing your knees to bend and travel as much as possible, thus lengthening the quads as much as possible, that's a big yes. So if people say don't squat with your knees over your toes, you look them dead in the eye. Give me the eye, give me the eyes. And say, stop it, behave yourself. Unless you obviously have an injury or something that may prevent you from achieving that range of motion, there is nothing wrong with squatting your knees over your toes. Actually, I encourage it, and I think if it aligns with your biomechanics, it's a big yes. Because if you don't squat with your knees over your toes, again, like I said, depending on injuries, biomechanics and whatnot, then you're actually potentially limiting how many gains you may make in the quads. Knees over the toes, big yes. You want big quads, big knee travel. That makes sense. The heaviest weight they have is 140. I can very easily hip thrust 140, but I don't know if I can get that on my lap. If you're going to stick with a dumbbell only workout, perhaps you're working at a home or something along those lines, try single leg. Just because you're limited to equipment doesn't mean you can't make the movement more difficult. So definitely consider trying with a single leg because then obviously you're shifting that weight from both legs over to one leg, thus making it a lot harder, thus giving you a bit more of a progressive overload ceiling, we'll say. And then I just make sure you do your weakest leg first, then Rest as if it's a new set, then move on to your strongest leg afterwards, matching reps from the weakest leg. So let's say you might do 10 on your on your left leg, you rest for let's say three minutes, and then you do 10 again on your right leg. Because then obviously you've got to consider if you have any imbalances, starting your weakest leg is probably the, a good thing to do. There's also the argument that if you don't rest for long enough, you actually recruit smaller motor units for the following side, so the second side. So here we've got the dumbbell RDL. Again, first of all, four sets of 12 reps. That's a lot of volume. The dumbbell RDL, again, is a fantastic movement. Barbell or dumbbell RDL, I really don't have a mass preference. I say for stiff leg deadlifts, I'd, I'd probably go barbell for obvious reasons. For RDL, I would toy up between the dumbbell or the barbell, either or. I think they're both fantastic. And the fact that you're using dumbbells isn't necessarily gonna limit how effective the movement is, nor is it gonna limit how stable you are because you're, in both cases, gonna be pretty stable. Rip is obviously gonna be a consideration for either of those, but that's why we have straps and things like that. One of the big things Patty's doing really well here is look at this hip pushes her hips all the way back and she stops her range of motion roughly around the time she can't get her hips back anymore. And this is what I speak about is obviously this is a hip hinge movement, therefore you want to hinge at the hips. And when you can no longer hinge at the hips, you're probably done. If you go lower than your natural range of motion, which is going to be when your hips can't go back any further, you are not really going to be favouring the glutes or the hamstrings any more than you were before. If anything, you're actually just placing a bit more emphasis on the lower back, which is probably not what you want. But as a whole, honestly, dumbbell only workouts can be really effective. Sometimes you just have to be a bit creative. Like I said, I typically move move less stable movements towards the end of the workout. I'd favor more stable movements earlier on. And then you've got to think about ways you can make that movement more effective for the muscles you're looking at targeting. So for example, if you're doing like a squat variation and you want to place a bit more emphasis on the quads, elevate those heels, encourage that knee travel, encourage the additional knee flexion to therefore make it potentially more effective for the quads. If you feel like you are maxing out the weight in which you're using, let's say for the, the glute bridge or the hip thrust, and you feel like the dumbbells don't get heavy enough, how could you make that movement more difficult? Could you maybe swap to one leg at a time so unilateral movement could you maybe add a pause either end of the movement so maybe at the bottom or at the top could you maybe slow down the eccentric slightly although we know time under tension doesn't really have a mass place in the realm of building muscle we still want to control the eccentric because as far as i'm aware i believe the majority of injuries do actually occur during the eccentric portion of the rep so what i would say is control down to the bottom pause at the bottom explode up pause at the top. With a single leg as well, suddenly you've made that movement really hard and probably a lot, a lot more difficult than it was before. And maybe even open up like a new range of progressive overload or heighten that progressive overload ceiling perhaps. You don't have to just increase the weights to progressively overload at home. You can do more reps. We know that the hypertrophy rep range is anywhere from five to 30 reps. So if you're pushing up to 30 reps with single leg, a pause either side and a good 
eccentric, you're doing well. Could you maybe add a bit more additional resistance through another dumbbell, put a second dumbbell on top, or a band perhaps, something along those lines. Could you add additional resistance elsewhere? So I think dumbbell only workouts, especially when looking at home workouts, can be really effective, but sometimes you just need to be a bit more creative with them. There's no point comparing and pondering if you'd have better results if you could hack squat instead of goblet squat if you don't have a hack squat, because it, that doesn't change anything. You've got to make do with what you have and make it as effective and as enjoyable as possible. Comment question of the week this week is very relevant to what we've actually just discussed. Is there really much of a difference between a leg press and a hack squat in terms of hypertrophy or strength? Especially for someone who replaces normal squats with either of those, the only other squat based movement I do is split squats, can never tell if the stuff I read online is just bro science. So yeah, there, there is a difference. I think if I had to choose one, I would actually favour the hack squat over the leg press in most cases. The hack squat typically works the quads more in their lengthened position, the leg press may work the quads more in their mid position. At this stage we know that the quads are hyper responders to stretch mediated hypertrophy based on the current literature, which means length and position dominant movements are going to be really juicy and good for the quads, therefore I would kind of favour them if possible. So if you only actually had access to two movements, I would actually probably go a hack squat and like a leg extension, so you're working the quads in their lengthened position as well as the shortened position whilst actually hitting the rec fem as well. But yeah, there is a difference between the leg press and the hack squat, like I said, length and versus mid position. Both are fantastic movements, both have a place in programs, and if you can only do one, I think either is fine. Just personally, for my preference, I would choose the hack squat for the additional stretch mediated hypertrophy benefits it may yield. I do both of them in the same session and I think they're both fantastic movements. That is it. That is the video. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like the video then please let me know you like the video by liking the video and if you haven't already please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even tickle the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week and if you two have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video then please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section with comment to question of the week and I should do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my not very Christmassy Christmas headpiece and thank you for tolerating the video.